In this problem, notice it's asking you to write the equation in slope-intercept form, and they're giving you a set of two ordered pairs. Now, so they didn't give us an equation, but with these two ordered pairs, we can find the slope, and we can use that slope in one of these ordered pairs to find the equation. But we're going to have to use multiple formulas. So let me go ahead and show you the different formulas that we'll need in order to solve this. The first one that we're going to need is we're going to need slope. So I'm going to put m equals, and our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that is our slope formula. We'll be using that first to find the slope. And so I'm going to go ahead and set this up, and I recommend you do the same on any problems you're doing that are similar to this. I'm going to put a set of parentheses for y2, put my minus sign, and a set of parentheses for the y1 value. And then I'm going to do the same thing for x2 minus my x1 value. And we'll get the slope, which will be used inside of another formula to get the, form, to get the equation in slope-intercept form. Now the other formula that we're going to have to use, I'm just going to draw a line here so we can break this up, is going to be the point-slope form. So the neat thing about the point-slope form is that when we have the point and the slope, we can use this formula to create a formula in slope-intercept form. So when it comes to point-slope form, here is the formula. It is y minus y1 is equal to m, which is the slope, times x minus x1. Now you're going to notice that I went ahead and I went ahead and wrote some of these variables in pink. And that's because the ones in pink, we're going to be replacing them with a value. All right, so the ones that are black, they're going to stay the same. They're going to be consistent. But we're going to go ahead and replace these ones in pink in just a moment with the m that we get when we find the slope. And then we're going to pick one of these ordered pairs. It doesn't matter which one, but we'll pick one of them to go ahead and substitute the y value from it for the y1 and the x value from it for x1. So we're getting close. Um, the last thing I want to talk about before we actually do this is I want to talk about what is slope-intercept form. So when we talk about slope-intercept form, I want, you know, think back to eighth grade math and algebra one, we're talking about the form where it says y is equal to m, which is the slope, I'm just going to put an arrow, that's your slope, x plus b, which is your y-intercept. And that's why they call it the slope-intercept form because it has the slope first and then it has the intercept. We call this one down here the point slope form because we have a point, a value from an ordered pair that's a point on a graph, and then we have the slope. Now let's go ahead and let's utilize these equations, this one and this one, so that we can then have this up here. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's going to take a little bit of paper because it has several steps that we're going to go through. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit. And I'm going to start by labeling my x and y. The first thing we're going to do is find slope. So I'm going to write first right here. That's what you want to do first. And just so you know, when you get to college, this is very common for them to give you two ordered pairs and you have to find something in slope-intercept form. So I feel like this is actually a really important skill to know in algebra. So I'm going to go ahead and label my points. I'm going to label this one x1. And this is going to be y1. And then I'm going to label this x2 and y2. Now, because I've already got this labeled x1 and y1, when we substitute the y1 and x1 value into this particular formula here, to this equation, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my first ordered pair. Now, here's what I'm going to do. So notice down here, to find my slope, I need to get my y2 value and put it in the first set of parentheses. Because anytime we replace a variable with a number, we always put it in parentheses. So I'm going to go to my y2, and I'll circle them as I'm picking them out. So there's my y2 value of negative 1. I'm going to write it in. And then I'm going to subtract from that my y1 value. So y1, so my one y1 value is negative 4. So I'm going to put that in there, negative 4. And you can see here very clearly, it's important that you actually use parentheses. Because notice we have this negative sign that came from that 4, right? If there's a negative sign in front of your number, you have to put it in the parentheses with that value. And something's going to happen when we distribute right here. 
Now next, I'm gonna go ahead and take my x2 value because the next variable on the denominator is gonna be x2. And so there's my x2 value, which is zero. So that's an easy one, but zero. And then subtract my x1 value, right? Because the next variable is x1. So that's gonna be a two. And now we're ready to go ahead and start doing some math here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start distributing. Notice I have this negative sign here. There's actually an invisible one that's in front of every parenthesis. So really it's like saying negative one times negative four. And if you're not good with memorizing your signs, right, you can always check your work with the calculator. You can say, well, you know what? I didn't know what negative one times negative four is. So we'll just throw it in the calculator. Negative one times negative four. It'll do all the work for us. And it says it's a positive four. So that becomes positive four. So I'm actually going to show you all the steps that we're doing here. We still have this negative one. Now notice there's no negative sign in front of it. So we can drop the parentheses and we can just write negative one. Now the thing is, because this second, this first one that we did, we distributed that negative sign, because it turned it into a positive four, I gotta put a plus sign in between the negative one and four. Because negative one times negative four gave me positive four. The negative one, I just brought it down and I'm gonna drop the parentheses on my zero. This negative one multiplied times positive two leaves me with a negative two. So we have subtraction going on there. And we're just gonna continue this process so that you can see what the final answer is. So now in my numerator, I have negative one plus four. So negative one plus four. And it gives me three. And then I have zero minus two. Right? Not that you need a calculator for that, but I just want to show you how simple it is, right? If you're having a moment where your brain goes blank, just throw it in the calculator. But that gives me negative two. So now I have a slope. My slope is going to be, and notice I do have the negative in the denominator, but we could simply rewrite this as m is equal to negative three over two. And that is my slope. Now that was important because that was our first step because without the slope, we can't use the point slope form formula. So I have this now, I have negative three over two. Now just to let you know, we could have, if you didn't want to go through all the steps, but I'm showing you this right in all these steps in case your teacher wanted to see all the steps that you took place, how you distributed it and whatnot. But you could have just went ahead and simply hit alpha y equals and enter and it would have given you a, a fraction bar and we could have just typed everything in there. In other words, I could have put parenthesis, negative one, close parenthesis, minus parenthesis, negative four, close, and then go down to the denominator, parenthesis zero, close, minus parenthesis two, close, and hit enter. And it would have still told me the same answer, negative three over two, right? So we can just put this whole thing in the calculator. I'm just gonna highlight it. If we didn't wanna do it by hand, we could just take this, put it in the calculator, and we still get the same answer. So I know I got it right. And now we're gonna use this in our point slope form to go ahead and create an equation in slope intercept form. So the first thing I wanna do, and I'm gonna put over here, this is gonna be second step. So this was our first step. This is our second step. We're gonna substitute. So we are gonna substitute the values of y1 of m, the slope, and x1. So I'm gonna rewrite this with the value substituted in. So I have y minus. Now for y1, I am gonna put a parenthesis there because we're gonna be substituting for a variable is equal to, and for the m, I'll put a parenthesis. And then I'm gonna put x minus, and then for x1, I'm gonna put a parenthesis. So I'm just putting parentheses everywhere that we're substituting a variable. Now for the y1, I'm gonna go up here to the one that I labeled y1, and it was negative four. So I'm gonna put in there negative four. And that's this value right here. I'm taking this negative four, that's my y1 value for my ordered pair and putting it in place of y1 in the formula. I'm gonna take the m and replace it. So our m value is negative three over two. So I'm gonna put negative three over two. And my x1 value, I'm gonna take this x1 value up here, which is positive two and put it in there. So now we have some math to do, right? We got a, some distributive property we got to take up. So let's go ahead and start distributing. I'm gonna use my highlighter to kind of show. 
first of all, we have this negative 1, right? There's a negative sign in front of the parentheses, so we have negative 1 being multiplied to this value inside, negative 4. So if I go ahead and I multiply that out, if I do negative 1, I'm just going to write it right here, times my negative 4, all it's going to do is change the sign from negative to positive. So that just becomes a positive 4. This little arrow just means we put these two together and we, we um, multiply them. Now I am going to bring this y back down. So now instead of y minus parenthesis negative 4, it's y plus 4. So it's a little bit simpler. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to need to distribute um, inside of here this negative sign to this 2. So what I mean by that is notice we have this negative sign right here. I'm going to circle it and we're going to multiply it to that 2 right there. In other words, we have negative 1 times positive 2. And if we bring that down, it's simply going to turn that into a negative 2. I'm going to bring down my x because we're doing this in little steps to make sure that you see everything that happens. Let's see. Put an extra parenthesis there. Let me get rid of it. All right. So now all I got left is my slope. Now my slope, I can just tell you when you're using this formula, you can always drop the parentheses for a slope because there's never going to be a negative sign in front of here, in front of the parentheses. So there's always a positive one. And if you multiply this times a positive one, it doesn't change anything. So this is just negative 3 over 2. So we're a little closer to solving this. We substitute it. We distribute it two negative signs, this one right here and this one right here. And now we end up with this right equation. Now the next step is we're going to take what's outside the parentheses, which is our slope of negative 3 over 2, and multiply it to both terms on the inside. So let me do that. So I have negative 3 over 2 times this x value. And so that simply becomes negative. I'm actually going to move the camera down just a little bit. So when I multiply this times x, right, and that's just a 1x, there's an invisible 1 in front of it, it just becomes negative 3 over 2x. And then we have this negative 3 over 2 times negative 2. So let me write that one, negative 3 over 2 times negative 2. So if we multiply that, right, we could do it by hand. I'm just going to throw it in the calculator real quick. So if I go ahead and hit alpha, y equals, enter, I got my fraction bar. I'm going to put negative 3 over 2. And then I'm going to put times negative 2. And I'm going to hit enter, and it tells me it's positive 3. So this becomes positive 3. I'm going to bring down my equal sign, and I'm going to bring down the y plus 4. All right, we're almost done. Now remember, our goal, right, what we're setting out to do is make it look like this. y equals m x plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So in order to make it look like this, I've got to get rid of this 4 on the left side of the equation. I need to move it over to the right. So that's a positive 4. We're adding 4. So I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is subtracting 4. All right, I'm going to just draw my line through my equation. Really, at this point, we're just solving for y because we want to isolate y and get it all by itself with a coefficient of 1. So that cancels. I'm then going to subtract 4 over here. And if you're not good at adding integers, right, we can just put that in a calculator. Positive 3, right, plus negative 4. We're just combining those two terms. And it's negative 1. So I'm going to write this gave me negative 1. I'm going to bring down my slope, which is 3 over 2x. And I'm going to bring down my y. And now we actually have an answer. We have y equals, so I'm going to put my equal sign right here, negative 3 over 2x minus 1. So let me rewrite that right here. So y equals, I'm going to do my slope in pink real quick, negative 3 over 2. That's my m value, x. 
and then it's minus 1. So this positive b has now become negative because we have a negative 1, minus 1. That was my slope, that's my y-intercept, and I am done. This equation is now written in slope-intercept form. And that's all there is to it.